Right, today we're going to go over the 303 CN3.i, which is a CNC roll bending machine from Corel. And what I want to go over initially is just to go over the, 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 the basics of the machine, the controls, the buttons, what goes with what. So this is the initial screen that's going to come up as soon as you power the machine on. You're going to see emergency restore. That's the first thing that you're going to hit. And you're going to hit your green button. to start the hydraulic system. Okay, so the first thing you need to do when you see this is there's gonna be a set button here and you're gonna hit the set button and what this does is going to reset all the axes. Okay, you've got the x-axis which is the top axis, the y-axis which is the lower right axis, and the lower left roll is your z-axis. So by pressing to 2D, what it's gonna do is it's gonna reset all of those axes. Okay. So once you see all the green lights there, you're going to hit exit. Now the rolls are calibrated. Okay. So just scrolling, just as you're looking at the screen here, what this, let's start from the left to right hand side. This is your left rotation. This is the left forming roll, which is your Z. Up and down. And that's your emergency restore. That turns the hydraulic system on. This turns the machine off, if you will. This here is also your rotary encoder. You can manually adjust this, and in a program, this will automatically come up and touch the material. Okay, so that button is that. This is going to be your Y roll, it's your Y rotation. Now, when I'm moving in this direction, it's going to be negative, you'll see on the program. When you're moving this direction, that's going to be positive. So when you're programming or putting your program together, the direction in which you move is either on this side is going to be negative, and on this side is going to be positive. Okay? Now, you can also toggle between the automatic mode or the jog mode. Your jog mode is your manual mode. Okay? So when I'm in jog, I can manually move and adjust the rolls. This is my Y roll, which is your bottom right roll, which is your adjustment up, your adjustment down. Okay. Now, the wrap percentage you're not going to be using with this machine. The one that you do want to take notice of is the feed percentage and the speed rate. Okay. Your feed percentage, let's say for example, if I move, if I move this up, I can basically what this allows you to do is control the the speed of the forming rolls up and down. I can go slow or I can go high. And that's something that you can also incorporate into the program. Okay? Your speed rate as I rotate, if I'm gonna rotate in the positive direction. So you have infinitely variable speed on this. Again, which you can also roll into the program. So your feed rate up, okay, so that's that, okay, so let's go over a couple of the, uh, the buttons here on the main screen. So what we have, if you look, let's go from the bottom right, this one where you exit, you also have an alarms page, so if there is an alarm, it'll list out what that alarm is. And you will have to clear that alarm before you begin the next step in the program or the next step in the phase. Uh, you've got to log in for your parameters, and I'll explain what that is in a little bit. You've got semi-automatic functioning, you've got materials, your programs, and your production. These three, your materials, your programs, and your production are going to be basically the main things that you're working with. Okay? And we'll go into that in a second. Okay, so going up on the right-hand side of the screen, you've got your jog, which is your manual. Okay? You've got your when you go into auto, you're going to see you've got a CS, CNC executable and you've got a single executable. Your CNC is going to be fully automatic, okay? And your single EXE is going to be a step-by-step, -step, meaning that you'll have to push the start button on every step of the program. So it just depends whether you want to run in full CNC or you want to run step-by-step. -step. It's totally up to the program programmer, or the operator, if you will. Okay. These next buttons here, 
A lot of them are highlighted out. You probably won't need them. And when you go back to here, your KVY0 and KVZ0, those are only going to be used in case the manufacturer has to, has to dial in and do a little maintenance or upgrade or do something on the, the PLC. So you won't be using those as well. So we'll go back to the home menu. Okay, so we're back to where we started from. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's look at how we build a program from the beginning. Okay, so we're going to hit our materials. Now, your material setup is required. It's basically the foundation of your program. You cannot run a program on this machine without a material and without a program. So whenever you create, and I'll show you, we're going to go into how to create and modify the program. But when you run a program, you're going to going to pick a material setup that you're working with. So those two go hand in hand. So you cannot run a program without a material setup. For example, I've got a couple of, uh, of materials here. I just want to kind of go through. I'll show you one that doesn't have any any data to it as of yet. Okay, so I highlight that. You'll see what it highlights. I'm going to hit modify. So what it does is it gives you the name of the name of the material, the description of the material. What you also do with this machine is you want to give it because it has the ability to adjust on the forming roll speed. So in order to do that, we have to figure out what the diameter of the rolls are, and that is what what, what rolls you're working with. In the case if you're working with tube, you want to roll with the diameter of the inside of the tooling. If it's flat tooling, you're going to measure the diameter of the rolls here. So it can be outside or inside, but this is this is crucial in the sense that the diameter of the rolls is, are, is required. Okay, your pinch roll position of Y and your pinch roll position of Z. These are going to equate into what I call the tangent of the bend. When you bring, let's say, for example, if you've got a, a tube in there, you want to bring both rolls up, and they encapsulate, en encapsulate that tube where the boat, where basically both bottom rolls come up together and they touch the top roll, and that material is in compression. That is going to be the tangent and that is what you're going to need to find for the profile the material setup. Okay. Now you also have a you also have a bending roll selection of Y or Z. And that's going to de depend on the direction in which you're rolling. Your Y, X, Y, so if you're rolling from right to left, I mean from left to right, you can be rolling this direction, you would use Y. If I'm rolling from right to left, I want to use the Z roll, okay? So you ha you can pick. If you know that you're making a compound or a, st a static bend where you're rolling left and you have to come back and tighten it up and roll to the Y, then you're going to use your bending roll selection for both. Okay, so we're going to go over our current positions. Your X is your rotation. Your Y is your bottom left roll 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 former. Your Z is your bottom left roll former. As you'll notice. As I'm moving this, moving it up, moving it down, you'll see it adjust there. I can also adjust or move the position or the rotation, if you will. Now, if you want to reset that, you can go over here to hit this button, and you'll see that the X is gone back to zero. Okay. In order to get this, what we also want to do, once we reset that, you're going to reset here, and you're going to go up to jog, and it gives you back the ability to manually uh, manually move that move those axes okay so this is the material this is one material setup that doesn't have any information in it the reason I say that when I go to definition you'll see that there's been no tests here so what I want to lead into and the fact is is you can use a blank material setup without any information in it if you manually want to go find the roll positions you don't have to do certain tests. You're going to have to use your material data and, and, and certain tests when you want to give the, the software uh, and the control some parameters in which to fit. In this case, I'll show you exactly what I'm saying in one second, but you can use the, a, a blank material setup with a program if you just want to find the steps or the, or the radiuses of a position in, in a, on a drawing. Okay, let's go back to profile this here. Let's go back one. We're going to look at one that we've also got some information in. Okay. So let's pick RB. We're going to hit modify. You'll see I've got the name RB, description, profile one. We figured out what the diameter of the rolls were and what our, our 
tangent position for the bottom two rolls are. Okay, let's go and look at the definition itself. Okay, so when you've got a drawing, like say for example in this case, you've got some, you've got a multi-radius bend. What you want to do here, what they're asking for the preliminary test number one is what is the bending roll position and the radius obtained? Okay, so what you want to do is you want to take, you're basically giving the computer uh, some limits. You're going to give it its lowest limit, so take the radius that you have and find the roll positions of well, something that's a, a, basically a radius that's 20% less than the smallest radius as well as 20% less 20% greater than your greatest radius and then you can calculate that and what it does is it gives you the ability to fine-tune the program so when I say how do you find a roll position okay and enter that into the enter that into the software okay so let's say for example you've got a set of two rolls on here and we're working with pipe you bring the material in you're gonna bring your bending roll up to a certain you can look to see where your radius template is based on the pre-bend of the material okay okay so how do you find your roll position to enter that information into your material setup okay so say we've got a tube roll tube roll setup we we'll bring the material in you're going to use a cut a radius template for the 20 percent Lo, the, uh, below the, your smallest radius, okay, bring the material in, we're going to roll it a little bit, and then we're going to take this radius and put it in, that, in the crook of the bend, okay, until it fits. So if that doesn't work, you take a sharpie, you mark it right here, you roll out another 14, 15 inches of material, bring your roll up, roll it out, then you measure it until you find the exact roll position that corresponds with that radius. Then you take that information and you plug it back into your program. Okay, so let's go back into the materials. And we're going to look at it. We'll pull another one up. Okay, so we know that our diameter of our roll is 245. We've got our pinch positions or our, or our tangent. We're bending on the Y going in this direction. You see the current positions. So let's go back and look at here's some information that was that was entered so I just want to explain this again your preliminary test number one again you're going to take your smallest radius go 20 percent less than that and find the position of the bending roll and the radius that you've obtained your preliminary second test is take the 20 percent of your largest radius find the bending roll position of that and put the radius it obtained and then confirm your preliminary results so over here what this does is it gives you the ability of three more tests okay so let's say for example if you've put this information in you created your program and you rolled it out and you're just a little bit off you can come back and fine-tune that by doing a, no, a new radius okay so you can see a little bit here at 900 the required radius was 900 the calculated position was 61.6 .6, and our radius obtained was 925 okay so we did another test recalculation again and we found it's the calculated roll position of 61.8 and our radius obtained was 905 905.0 okay if that's not enough you've got one more place where you can re even fine tune that even more so that's the idea behind the material setup again you can use if you want to if you want to use a blank material and find the roll positions then you can use a blank material setup that doesn't have anything behind it and then you can run a program create a program from there or for multi-radius bending you can use one that ha has some information behind it where you have to basically build onto that okay all right okay so what we're going to do now we're going to go into the programs okay so it gives you a list of the programs that you already have created uh, it also gives you a button for the new program, to modify a program, to delete a program, or duplicate a program. Okay, and this arrow here will also take you back to the main screen. Okay, so let's go through and just look at one that we've got created. And once I highlight that, I can go and create modify. So just to take you through the through the what they're looking for, basically if you have three stages, okay, um, and you also have the difference between elements mode 
and then positions chart and I'll show you what those the difference between those would be okay so just giving you a, a, an, an overview you've got your general data you've got the name of the program the description of the program and your material remember I said that every program has to have a material so if you want to change the material in there you can and you remember those are the same four materials that we already had set up so if you want to stick with that one you can or if you want to go back to the one that doesn't have any information you can but you have to always match up your material with a, your program with a material okay so let's go to stage one stage one shows you that your your reset sensor is enabled you can disable that if you like or you can highlight those. Now you're going to need those because you've got a rotary encoder that comes up and touches the material and you also have a start cycle sensor so when the material goes out this is what this tells you the speed during the sensor search okay it's measured in millimeters over minutes so in this case if I want to come in and say you're basically telling you're basically telling the the software how far out does the lead end of the material have to hit before it goes and hits the sensor? Let's just put 500. Okay. How far does it have to... I'm sorry. This is the speed in which. Okay. So we want to put... 5,000 is going to be roughly about 80 feet per minute. Okay. So let's put that... 5,000. Okay. So the speed in which it travels out, once it hits the sensor, how far back do you want to retract it? Okay, so that means that you can, sometimes you'll have a straight and you may just want to go on out and maybe you have zero. But if you want to bring the material back and start pre-bending it, let's just put a, put a distance of around 300. Okay, so that's stage one. We've got that set. And you can, again, you can see where your X, Y, and Z in those positions are. Stage two. Okay, this is the stage of your bending sequence, okay? You've got your steps, you've got your X, your translation. Now, your translation is the speed in which the forming rolls come up to form, okay? The transition itself is going to, over time, you're going to see, that's where you're going to see your blending. So it's going to be mostly your operator uh, is going to set the speed in which he he likes the, the speed of the forming rolls coming up and it also could be how fast the transition from your your um, your tangent comes up into the forming roll position also over here your feed you can while your program's running you can even increase that speed if you like to here okay so you've got you can set your speed in your transition and you can also have the, the control over your feed rate and your speed rate okay so your Z is going to be position of your roll Y is the position of your roll and the speed in which those rolls rotate okay so if I want to come in here and I want to make a modification to it okay you, you highlight the line you hit modify and it brings up your feed rate your the value of your Y the value of your Z the transition speed and the speed of rotation okay now if you wanted to adjust any of these you can see you can change the speed the, 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 of the Y and the Z okay so that is stage number two stage three is real simple again your unload positions are enabled you can disable that but you really want to keep them enabled and your unload positions of your X of your Y and your Z so what that means is after the after the part is rolled you want your roll positions your Y and your Z actually it's X Y Z Y and Z to come down so you can take the part out so as I come in let's just say let's just bring the rolls down to 20 20 okay now once we have that we're at the one two and three first one two and three stage we are in elements of uh, positions chart mode and I can hit save okay and overwrite it so any changes that I make to that program you can do that okay so that's stage one let's look at stage two and these basically are your bending step sequences okay so you've got the, the step number the length basically the length of the radius the speed of X which is rotation your radius and then your transfer and the transfer basically remember is the 
the speed of the forming roll coming up. Okay, so we're going to go to step one. Okay, so let's go and we're going to add a line. Now again, we're in elements mode, so it gives you a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do the radius length, you can use the radius angle, you can use chord height, which is your chord length and your chord height, which gives you the radius, or you can do a straight line, if you will. So each one of these, if you wanted to say, let's, let's go for example, we'll use a straight line first, so it gives you your length. We're going to go over, let's say, a thousand millimeters. Your transition speed, and again, this is up to the operator. You can have z between zero and 50, but you, that's something that you guys can work with in terms of the transition speed. Uh, and that's, that's the speed of the forming roll coming up. The speed in terms of rotation. Okay, and the direction you're feeding towards. X plus is going to be from right, from right to left. And, and in elements mode, you're going to only go one direction. Okay, we hit OK. So that's the first step of the program, is our straight. Add a second line. We're going to use the radius. Okay, the length of the radius. Let's say it's 1,500 millimeters. I'm sorry, that's the radius. Let's say it's a 500 millimeter radius. The length over that radius is 1,500. Transition speed is going to be 50 and the speed can be 5,000. Okay, and let's go back and modify this because we're not going to have a transition for the straight. It's going to be zero. And let's go back, add a line. We're going to use the straight line here. Length is going to be 1,000. Transition speed is zero and the speed is going to be 5,000. Okay, so we've got a straight, a radius, and a straight. And again, if you have to go back and modify that, you just hit that, you highlight the line, and hit modify, and you can make your changes. So we're gonna, now stage three is your unload position. So you've got your green light, unload positions enabled, and I wanna drop those rolls from back down to where they are so you can unload the material. Okay. And we're going to save that. Just in program. Okay. So again, let's go back through just the program setup. You've got your general data. We could type a description in here. It's two. You've got your stage, which again, this is just basically how far the sensor's enabled there, the speed at which you're going to go out there and reach it, and how far you're going to retract. And I want to save that again and overwrite it. Stage two, these are the steps of the bending sequence. You're straight, you're radius, you're straight, and we're in elements mode. And our unload positions, which is going to be where you take the material out. The rolls are going to drop down to the 30 and 30 for both Y and Z. And we're going to overwrite and save that program. Okay, so there's the test two that we just created. You can come in and you can look at it, modify it again if you like, make, make any changes. Okay, so now we've created a new program. You, I've showed you how to go in and look at one to see if you want to modify it. Stages. And we're showing you how to create a program. If you wanted to delete a program, you highlight it, hit delete. Or if you want to duplicate a program, you like that, and you can do that as well. So let's go back. So that's our programs. Now let's go into the production button here because this is where you're going to run your program. Okay, so I'm going to select a program. Let's hit test two. Now, when I send this to execution, remember, jog is going to be your manual screen, okay? So I want to go send it to execution. I'm going to go into automatic. So you see, I'm at test two, test two, and I'm using my material RB, okay? Once you, 
once you click this which is your auto you can see the machine status is automatic alternate cycle status and you're in run so once you're there you're going to click the start button and you'll see the rolls come up to the position so you can see where you're going and where you're currently at so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight test number two which was one that we created we're going to send to execution we're in automatic mode automatico we're going to hit start you can see the rolls coming up into the position now what's happening is the material is going to move forward this way it's going to hit this is your encoder that gives you the translation on the material this is your start cycle sensor this always has to be out when the material comes through it's going to highlight it now it's going to retract this is our straight 65 68.5 68.2 that's our tangent the transition there's your bending step you can see the the Y roll stayed the same the Z moved up to its bending position So this is your current step in execution. Now it's going to roll back into the straight. Now it's going to drop your rolls to the unload position. And that's the completion of the program that we created. Now let's take a look at the parameters here for a second. We're going to log in. The password is CNC. When you do that, you have access to the parameter screen. I would suggest you take pictures of all of this beforehand in case if you, if you have to, because this is where you come in to back up your database and restore your database as well as also have access to the USB port. Uh, your program list here, I would take pictures of this just in case, but my thing is you really don't want to go into this screen, but to have to access these two here, you have to get into the parameters. So take pictures of this. When you log out, go back to the main, hit the log out key, and then that, that basically highlights or deactivates the parameter screen.